Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Priya Sapaha. In my previous video, we have already discussed how to write synopsis and how to write dissertation. But that is not sufficient. While writing the dissertation, it is very much necessary to know the structure of footnote and bibliography. So first of all, we will discuss the structure of these things. There are lots of confusion about the differences between footnotes, references and bibliography. First of all, let's understand the meaning of these things. These are the sources and references of the materials used in the research work, which is mandatory to acknowledge. If the sources are not acknowledged, then it falls under the category of plagiarism. Now, where these things should be placed in the dissertation? Footnotes are always mentioned at the bottom of the page only, that is under footer. It reflects references of each page separately. Whereas reference and end notes are located at the end of the journals or at the end of the articles. Bibliography is always located at the end of the research, which is the list of all the sources and references. The most reliable format of citation for the lawyers and advocates is given in Blue Book. Blue Book is the uniform system of citation which is commonly used for the legal citation in the United States. However, it is also used in India in most of the citation. Although it is pretty confusing and complicated also, but it is considered as the most reliable source of the citation for the lawyer. The format of citation which I am referring is from the 19th edition of the Blue Book and these are the general rules for footnotes. The font must be Times New Roman, size 10, one line spacing and justified. There is a very common mistake that the person does not place a full stop after the footnote, which should be placed after every footnote. Month should be written in the abbreviated forms like Jan, Feb, March, etc. There are different format for each sources. For example, for books, if there is a volume number, you have to place first the number of the volume, then second name of author, then title of the book, then page number, then the name of the editor or a translator, then edition year. There are some rules and exceptions also. You have to write first first name and then the surname. And if there are two authors, you must separate them by using end. In case of citing a book that has been edited, always write ED or EDS. Similarly, if the book is translated, always write trans. If it is both, then first write the editor's name and then the translator's name. Then for more than two authors, first of all, you have to write the name of the author, then editor or translator that appears first followed by et al. Do not add P or PP before the page number. Just write down the numericals. Like if it is from the page number 2 to 5, sim simply write 2 and dash 5. Do not use P or PP before the number. Similarly, journals are having a different format. For consecutively paginated journals, uh, which means when the periodicals is organized by volume and page numbers continue throughout the volume, it is consecutively paginated periodical. That means in a year, if there are four journals which has, to, which has to be published, then the first volume should be 1 to 100 page. The second may be 101 to 200. Then third is 201 to 300 and fourth is 301 to 400. That is called as pertinent journals. In that particular journals, if you are referring that sources, you have to write first the name of the author, then the title of the article in the inverted commas, then journal volume number, then abbreviation of journal page on which the article begins and page cited in which year. Similarly, there are some rules and exceptions also. If there are two authors, again, you have to separate them by using and. For more than two authors, again, you have to write the name of the author first and then add it all. And for the non-consecutively paginated journals, there is a different 
citation. For example, use the name of the author, then title of article again in the inverted comma, then abbreviation of the journal, date of issue as appear in the cover, at first page of work, page cited like this. If you are using newspaper article, then the citation must be the name of the author, then the name of the article, then name of the news report, abbreviation of the name of the newspaper, then month, date, year, and page number. The next source is very popular amongst the youth, that is internet. When an authenticate, official, or exact copy of source is available online, citation can be made as if to the original print source without any URL information attached. Always remember, if you are citing an article from any of the journal online or any e-newspaper, then you have to write like this. First, the name of the author, then name of the article, then institutional owner of domain, then month, date, year, time, and the URL. Always mention visited on a particular date. There are some exceptions also. Write the entire URL as appears in the address bar of the browser and remove hyperlink. There is a specific format for case writing or citing a case. For US cases, you have to write first party versus second party, then reported volume number, reporter abbreviation, first page of case, then specific page reference here. For Indian cases, it should be again the case name, that is first party versus second party, then year of reporter, then volume number, reporter's abbreviation, first page, year of decision, if different from the year of reporter, and then the place. There are some exceptions, that is do not italicize the case name. Then if there are more than one parties, list only the first party. Then italicize the procedure, procedural phrases, for example, in re or ex parte. There are certain abbreviations which are often used in footnoting. The first one is EBIT, which is derived from the Latin word EBDM, that means the same. And second is OPSIT, which is again derived from the Latin word OPPOSITEM, which means the work cited. Now, how to place them and how to write them? For example, if there is a citation number 5 in which you have mentioned the name of the author, the book, academic year, place, year of publication, and page number. And in the next citation also, that means if the citation is fifth and in the sixth citation again, you have to refer the same thing without any changes. You will write a bit. That means exactly the same which has been mentioned immediately above the footnote. Then the second one is opposite. If you are using opposite, that means again the same thing, the work which has been cited earlier. But here you will mention the name of the person, that means name of the author. Then opposite means the same work which has been cited and the page number. That is any page number which you are citing. The next abbreviation is it. It is similar to EBIT. The difference is EBIT is exactly the same reference of the above footnote, whereas in it what happened, everything is similar, but the last thing that is page number is different. That means in citation number five, you are, if you are mentioning any author and his book with the year, publication, everything at the page number 106. And when you are citing it again, Everything is similar, but the page number is different. So you will write it at 45. The next abbreviation is Supra. Supra is again citing the previous cited footnote or material as it is. But the difference is if there is a 15th number of citation in which there is a particular source has been used, and in the 25th number of the citation, you want to use it again. Then you will write the name of the author and then you will write Supra Note 15. That means after 10 footnotes, you are again using the same footnote which you have mentioned at the footnote number 15. 
Similarly, there may be some other form also to write the supra note. Now again, if you want to refer the supra note 15 in your 28th one, but there is a change on the page number, you will write the name of the author, then supra note 15, that means everything which has been mentioned under footnote 15, but the page number is 52. So you will write the name of the author, supra note 15 at 52. Let's have a quick revision of the abbreviation. The first one is EBIT, which means immediately after second footnote without any changes in the sources. Second is IT. Everything is same as above, but change in the page number. For example, IT at 29. The third is SUPRA. That means same as referred earlier, but not in the same page. For that, you have to first write name of the author then supra note 12. And if there is change in the page number, write down author's name, then supra note 12 at 22. One more thing you should remember that you have to write a bit it supra, that means the Latin words in italics. There is a separate format for bibliography. Bibliography is a list of the books referred in the scholarly work typically printed as an appendix. It is the last part of the dissertation. In this, you have to give references of all the sources which you have mentioned in the footnotes. But remember, you have to write only sources. You do not have to write case laws in this. If you are using the same sources n number of time in the dissertation, please do not do a mistake of writing those number of time in the bibliography. You have to mention one source at one time. In bibliography, always write everything in the alphabetical format. That means every heading and subheading should be written in an alphabetical format. For example, if you have taken the sources from the various things like acts, articles, book, journals, newspaper, website, write down alphabetically and then use the other sources under this like the subheading should also be alphabetically if you are you're writing an author's name you have to write first the surname and then the author's name which is a different from the footnote in which you are using the author's name this is all about the citation and the reference of writing a footnotes and bibliography in the dissertation for the detailed notes, you can visit to my website that is priyasipaha.com in which everything has been explained in a detailed manner. Till then, goodbye.